Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a first impressions on this foundation here. Um, this is called the Dermacol Film Studio. Oh no, sorry, it's not called that. It's called Dermacol Makeup Cover. Um, and I think it's actually supposed to be like just a cover up slash concealer, but a lot of people are using it for foundation. So this is what it looks like. And this is what the box looks like. Let's put it up there, if you can see that. Um, so I just got these in the mail yesterday, so I haven't used them at all. I've only swatched them on my hand and taken them out of the box, but I have not tried it on my face. So that is what I'm going to do for you on camera. So I found out about this foundation through a YouTuber who I just random I randomly came across on when I was browsing through YouTube videos. I can't remember what her name is because I don't really I don't usually watch her, but I'll try and find the video and link you down below and she compared it to the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation so if you guys have never tried that foundation that is pretty much the fullest coverage foundation I've personally ever tried so I'm going to start off with the Dermacol foundation first and I'm going to apply it on this side and then I'll do the Marc Jacobs later on this side now I have to mix two shades together because I done swatches one was a really nice yellow tone but it was too light for me and then the other one was a nice, uh, had nice depth and it was nice and dark for me, but it was a bit more on an orange undertone. So I'm going to have to mix two. So it comes in a squeezy tube, it's 30 grams, which is pretty much like the same size as every other foundation. Um, and then I'm just going to squeeze it onto the back of my hand. It's very, very thick and creamy, so I doubt I need a lot. I'm just going to put a little bit there. So I'm just going to mix those two together. Alright, so I've got nothing on my skin, no primers, no nothing, just straight bare skin. And I'm just going to... Wow, that's really thick. That feels so thick on my face right now. I'm fine with thick, I like thick. The brush I'm using to apply it is the Real Techniques Buffer Brush. I love this um, brush and I use it mostly for like my really full coverage foundations which is pretty much every foundation I have. I'm going to start to blending that out. It blends out very easily. It has a very like, I don't know, it's like, <clears throat> I'm trying to describe the finish of it. It's not like completely matte, like when you look at it, you're not like, oh, that's like pretty matte. It's not matte at all. But it's not like super shiny, it just has like a really nice, I'll probably just say satin finish to it. It has definitely covered up everything, so coverage wise, it's pretty damn good actually. So far I'm really liking this foundation. I feel like somebody who isn't used to like foundation on their skin you will probably find this a bit too heavy for you um because it is it's a very thick texture but it's made my skin look like super flawless and i'm all about that full coverage life so this has got thumbs up from me for coverage wise really like the finish it's very creamy it's not too matte um but it's not like super shiny we have to see like how long it lasts on my skin, um, but so far it's actually, I really like it. Super flawless. So this is bare skin, I've got a lot of freckles, got a bit of pigmentation and like redness spots here. And then this is the other side with the foundation on. The only con I have, and this is more of like a personal opinion, is that I really don't like the smell of it. Um, I just don't like the I just don't like floral smells like at all. But I mean, it's, that's more of a personal preference. It's not nothing bad about the actual foundation. On the packaging, it says it's hypoallergenic. It's waterproof makeup cover, and it has SPF 30. It says, which usually, um, if you don't want like foundations to flash back, you're trying to look for something that doesn't have SPF in it, and this has SPF 30, so it's pretty high. But then at the bottom of it, it says it's ideal for professional makeup, photo shoots, film shoots, modeling or festive occasions. So they recommended it for film and like photo shoots. So maybe I'll just try it out and see if I get any flashback. Um, it says it provides perfect coverage even in thin layers, which is true. 
not only for dark circles under the eyes but also for unpleasant spots and skin blemishes so it pretty much covers up all of that stuff um, and it may also be used for the whole face which is the reason why I bought it I'm really liking this foundation like it's been sitting for a few minutes now just over five minutes I would say and it's really like settled into my skin really nicely and has a nice like fresh glow to it set and finish just looks, looks so good okay so now moving on to the other side um, I'm going to apply the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. I've actually never reviewed this on my channel at all. And I don't, I don't actually use it on myself because it's very matte. I would use it at night time, but I mainly use it on like clients who have very oily skin. It honestly looks so flawless on their skin. It just looks nice and lasts long. But on me, because I have more of a dehydrated skin, it does pick up like on my dry spots and like really makes my skin look dry. So... It's not the ideal foundation for me, but I'm going to use it anyway, so you can kind of just compare the coverage, the way it looks, and all of that. So I'm mixing 52 Honey, which is a nice shade, but it's very, very golden. And then I'm also going to mix it with a bit of 35 Beige, which is more of like a neutral undertone. This is what the foundation looks like. comes in a nice glass bottle. I do like the packaging of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Alright, so the obvious difference between these foundations, colour looks better, is that the Marc, the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation is still provides a very full coverage finish same as the other side but just because the formula is different like it's much more like thinner like the formula itself is much thinner it's not like thick or creamy so it does feel a little bit more lighter when you're applying it like you don't feel like you're applying like a very full coverage foundation even though it looks like it but it doesn't feel like it so that's the obvious difference between these two foundations both of these foundations a super high coverage I don't think one is more full of coverage than the other. I think they are both exactly the same. So I'm just checking out prices of how much I paid for both foundations. Um, I already know it's going to be a huge difference because the Marc Jacobs is like hell expensive. So here we go. For the Dermacore foundation, which is this one, and it's the same, you get the same amount of product, it's 30 grams. I paid $14 for this foundation, $14. So I'm just jumping on to Sephora. This is in Australian dollars because I live in Australia, so this is the price that I paid here. And for Marc Jacobs, get ready guys, for the Marc Jacobs foundation, I paid $79. $79 bucks compared to $14, that is a big gap. I don't know why I buy it. Actually, no, I know why I buy it because I used it in my kit. I just, I really like the foundation. Well, I love the foundation. Like, it's really flawless, full coverage, and looks amazing on everyone with oily skin. Um, but just $79. That's so expensive. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick comparison overview. So, Marc Jacobs on the side, the Remarkable Foundation, and Dermacol Makeup Cover on the other side. So, first difference is obviously the packaging you get 30 mils in here and 30 grams in here which is pretty much like the same amount of product except the Marc Jacobs is a lot bulkier packaging def definitely more luxurious looking and then sorry if I'm going out of focus and then the Dermacol is very small it's more compact uh, probably more travel friendly because it's more in a squeezy tube where this is more of a glass so if you were to drop it on concrete or something called Smash, where this one is a little bit more travel friendly, nice and compact, uh, perfect for makeup artists who like travel to do makeovers and stuff. Um, even though it doesn't look super fancy, it's just, it's just like more like, what's the word? I'm trying to think of the word. It's more convenient. That's the word. The biggest difference between both foundations is of course the price. 
seventy dollar. Uh, this is Australian, seventy nine dollars and fourteen dollars. So there's a big gap, big price gap. Both foundations have a fragrance to them. The Duma Colors more has like has more of a floral type of fragrance. It's not like super strong, but because I'm quite sensitive to smell, and I also don't like flowers or like floral smells or anything like that then that is that's probably the one con I have about the product whereas the Marc Jacobs does have a fragrance to it but it just hang on let me smell it again I need to yeah it just smells like foundation like it just smells like a foundation like a it's not a nice smell but it's not stink like it's not like horrible but it just smells like foundation um, so yeah they both have a little bit of a fragrance to them coverage wise they are both very super high 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 coverage so if you have freckles spots uh dark under eyes anything like that both of these foundations will cover uh, cover them up um they both cover just as well as each other in my opinion none of them have more coverage than the other they're they are just both maximum coverage formula wise the mark jacobs has a more uh, thinner formula so it does feel a little bit more lightweight when you're applying it Whereas the Dermacol has more of a thick creamy texture So only you have to like literally apply just a little bit a little bit a little bit and really work it across the face um, And that will cover everything so it's important not to apply too much Otherwise, it's gonna look very thick and feel thick and all of that so the Marc Jacobs foundation has a matte finish and I did mention earlier that I use it on clients, which is perfect for oily skin types. I just find it's the best foundation I have for oily skin. And I always get like a lot of feedback every time I use that on clients. And then, oops. and then this side has more of a creamy satin finish, so it has more of a glow to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions foundation uh, reviewish type of video. I think it's the first time I've ever done. A first impressions foundation type of video if you guys like it let me know down in the comments but yeah I'll catch you guys on my next video bye